here is an appendix to the answer that's just been given. Tonight, there can only be one author and one response by an author to the question that's just been asked. Right. Deepo is very modest. He says, I'm not here to sell the book. That's not his job tonight. That's my job tonight. So what I'm about to do is my job. Right. So don't and I will do it without being bashful about it. So let me tell you a story, a very short story. A number of years ago, an associate of mine came up to me, or I discovered in conversations that this associate of mine was leaving his job. And I thought to myself, ah, that's a dangerous thing to do. I wouldn't do that just now. Leaving his job to start a business. And I thought to myself, hmm, okay, let's see where this goes. So, I was watching him from a distance. He didn't even know. Right? He started the business, business co-founded the business with somebody else. And it became an international business. And didn't need to go back to his job. So I thought to myself, ah, whatever this guy knows, it's working. So I left it there. And then the next time, I hear this same guy. The next time I'm seeing emails flying around from this same guy saying actually now he's starting an academy, perhaps teaching the same principles that helped him to make that transition. I'm watching him and thinking, okay, let's watch this guy. So, and it starts in his house as far as I remember, and then goes to a public venue. And it goes from strength to strength to strength. I'm thinking, this guy knows something. This guy really knows something. And on top of that, I then that's a bit that this one person who's been to one of his seminars and the news I'm hearing is that actually this seminar is worth going for. So here is the conclusion I made. I made the conclusion that there are four levels of authority when you write. Four levels of authority. The first level of authority is novice. Novice, let me define a novice for you. A novice is somebody who is talking loud and clear about something about which they know nada. <laughs> let me give you an example of a novice. A man who writes a book about how to cope in, with severe labor pains. A man. <laughs> that is novice level authority. But there's a second level of authority. It is called experiential authority. That's when a man writes about something he's experienced. You can't miss it. He's experienced it, and therefore he's writing about it. That's important. But there's a third level of authority. It is called reproduction level authority. This is when a man does not only have a message, he doesn't only um, doesn't only express the message, but he preaches the message or speaks the message to the point where somebody else catches the message and produces results. And guess what? There's a final level of authority. It's called generation level authority. That's when a man has a message. He expresses the message, gives it to another man who expresses the message, and that man now takes it and gives it to yet another man who expresses it. Right. Guess what? The, my associate who approached me a number of years ago, who I heard about, is nobody else but Deepo Akari Lade. <laughs> my sales speech, the answer to the question, why this book is unique, is that it's written by a man who has generational level authority. Deepo runs Financial Freedom Academy in partnership, or on his own, I'm not sure which. But people have gone to that academy and produced similar results to what he produced. And those same people have become heralds of the message, who have brought other people to the same academy. That's generational level authority. I want to read any word that a man like that reads. Sales speech over.